Today I thought it would be fun to talk about some disturbing things that park rangers have found while out on the job. Now I know this is a different video, I'm on camera and it's a little bit different, but hopefully you'll enjoy it and stick with me. With the exception of a case from 2019, everything we're going to be covering in this video has happened rather recently within the past 6 months or so. And seriously, to all my Swamp Dweller family out there, these park rangers have some truly horrendous jobs sometimes. Some of the things we're going to discuss, if I found personally, would definitely be quitting the job. Just know, if you're a park ranger or an ex-park ranger, I respect the hell out of you. Just be safe out there on the job. I don't want to have any of these stories be about you. But, if you do encounter something disturbing while out there on the job, you know who to send it to. I'm trying to make this a regular series. The Foot in Yellowstone National Park I thought we'd dive into something that happened actually only a few weeks ago. Maybe only a month ago at most. If Wyoming is known for anything, it's definitely its beautiful park of Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park was discovered in 1872 and boasts an unfathomable size of 2.2 million acres. And according to the Park Service website, it has the most natural geysers in a single area anywhere in the world. The dangers of Yellowstone really can't be stressed enough though. Aside from the super volcano, if you spent any time on this channel, you know there's plenty of legends that go on about that park. With such vast areas of untouched wilderness, you know there are a few secrets lying about. Yet, it's no surprise that Yellowstone is one of the most breathtaking places in the entire country. So of course, it's become one of the top tourist places to visit all across the country. Now, whether any of these legends actually have anything to do with the human foot found around this natural geyser called the West Thumb Geyser Basin is up for debate. But we do have a little bit more information to share. According to KSL News Radio, Chris Quinn was visiting Yellowstone with his family on August 11th when they spotted a shoe floating sole up in the hot springs. Obviously concerned, he took a picture and sent it over to the park service. Whether the email was disregarded or the shoe simply wasn't found isn't specified, but nothing came of Quinn's email. Then on August 16th, everything would change. An employee would find a very mysterious shoe. It was complete with a foot still inside, found floating in the abyss pools. This particular hot spring is over 50 feet deep, so making it very dangerous. It's one of the deepest in the entire park, and it can reach up to temperatures of 140 degrees. Now that's a freaking boiling bath. The area was crossed off to be investigated, of course, and cleaned up. Authorities quickly ruled out foul play, believing the foot might actually be related to a death from July lie. Guys, I read so many articles and I still can't really figure out what they're referring to. But aside from what happened apparently on July 31st, no real information has really been released. Obviously, I'm not a professional researcher, but I did Google some articles from the time and from the area. I was hoping to find some sort of mention of the incident, maybe some sort of obituary, and I couldn't even come up with a victim's name. When the park service was inquired about this email that they received from Chris Quinn, spokesperson Linda Vares could not confirm or deny if it was the same foot that had been reported that they had found. But I think it's pretty coincidental at the very least. In all honesty, it just kind of seems like a lame way of saying we messed up without saying we messed up. Luckily, with this being such a recent case, there may be some updates coming in a future video very soon. The Truck in the Reservoir our next story is also from just a few weeks ago. I would say this is less mysterious and more everything else. Joe Donnell was a park ranger and emergency responder for 25 years, but is now currently retired. On August 22nd, he was merely enjoying his time at Morehouse Reservoir in Summit County, Utah, when something went terribly wrong. He and his family were near a boat ramp when they discovered a truck started rolling into the ramp, going straight into the water. Though he couldn't see inside the truck at all, he could see people chasing after it straight into the water. They were yelling and screaming and just freaking out. Upon approaching, he would learn some absolutely horrifying news. The parents and grandfather of a nine-year-old boy and a two-year-old girl were unloading their kayaks from their Dodge pickup truck, as you would when suddenly the vehicle began to lurch forward with both of the children still inside. Luckily, one of the boys were able to escape without the assistance from anybody. Brandon Haskell was able to save the toddler, but the last child, Paxton Knight, was trapped inside the truck and was disappearing before everybody's eyes into the water. Joe later told reporters at Fox 13, 
As an emergency responder, you are trained to respond. Without hesitation, he went in. While standing on the cab's roof, the murky water was much too dark to really see through, and it was almost completely over his head. But he dove six or seven times over a course of around 10 minutes before finally emerging with the boy's body. While in the submerged truck, visibility was dang near zero. Finally, on that last dive, by some stroke of luck, he felt something floating and grabbed onto it and yanked it out. He hugged Paxton close to his chest and began swimming back up to the surface. Once he was out of the vehicle and back onto the beach with all the bystanders, Fiona Pierce and Chance Peterson began to do CPR and resuscitation. Fiona received CPR training as a nurse, and Chance was luckily able to assist. He was then airlifted to the nearest hospital and put on life support. The fact that Pierce and Peterson had stepped in when they did really helped. It was every bit of a miracle that Joe's presence was there too. It's almost as if they weren't supposed to be there when this accident occurred. The story's actually kind of weird. They originally tried to visit the reservoir a day before, but a flat tire put a wrench in those plans, so they had to come a day later. The EMT, who arrived on scene, said Paxton had a pulse within the first minute of their arrival. Considering how long the child was submerged, this is truly some sort of miracle. Thankfully, Paxton went on to make a full recovery and is doing okay. He was released from a hospital, I think about a week after, shortly after the Knight family would come and be reunited with that brave park ranger. Joe and the others involved had a nice award ceremony and a banquet. As of a September 3rd update, the families who are now all friends are going to be planning to do this every year. For all the dark and horrifying cases we cover on this channel, it's nice to hear a happy ending for once. It's true, Joe and the others are heroes, no doubt. But that kid was underwater for 10 minutes. He fought like hell to survive and is a real warrior. Paxton is one tough little dude and I think he's going to be doing some great things in his lifetime. The Three-Eyed Snake. Next, how about we do something a little bit more fun to break up some of these heavier topics. This one is the oldest one on the video. This comes from March 2019 and definitely qualifies as weird and mysterious. Have you ever seen The Simpsons? Have you ever seen that episode where they have that three-eyed goldfish? Well, that might not be too far from reality. I'm here to tell you about something a little different though. A three-eyed snake. And of course, he's named Monty Python. And of course, with such a crazy natural thing being discovered, it's no surprise that this ended up being in Australia. According to an ABC News article, the roughly three-month-old carpet python was discovered on the Arnhem Highway near a small town, I kid you not, called Humpty Doo. It measured almost 16 inches long upon discovery. Because there are several cases of dual-headed snakes, it was assumed this three-eyed specimen would be the result of two heads fusing together. But, according to an x-ray, it was an actual third eye socket altogether. It's extremely unlikely that any environmental issues had anything to do with Monty's condition, and it's very likely that it was just a natural defect. Snake expert Brian Fry from the University of Queensland said, Every baby has a mutation of some sort. This one is just particularly coarse and misshapen. He also suggested the third eye could be the last bit of an absorbed twin, but he wasn't all that surprised by Monty's existence overall. Park officials likewise said that this was probably something that happened during the embryonic stage. Apparently malformed reptiles are actually relatively common, though if you are a fan of conspiracy theories, you might want to consider this as a sign of the coming apocalypse, or maybe something stranger. Go ahead, I won't judge you. Regardless of how the third eye came to be, it's downright strange and a nice break from some of these more brutal things we've come to find. Unfortunately though, Monty's condition made it hard to eat, and he died only two weeks after being discovered. Rest in peace, Monty. A lot of cocktails in the camper. Next, we have a delightful tale involving some, um, a lot of cocktails. Now, near a trail somewhere just outside of Los Angeles comes a headline you wouldn't expect to see on a normal day. Or I guess, you know, Los Angeles 
Weirder things have happened, to be fair. I'm sure most of you already know what they are. But if you don't know what a melodic cocktail is, let me explain real quick. Sometimes people usually, with bad intentions, fill the bottom of a glass bottle with a flammable liquid, stuff one end of a rag into the neck, and cap it off with a tar-like substance. Then, all they need to do is light the other end of the rag on fire and throw the bottle at the intended in target. In theory, the glass will break, the flammable liquid will catch fire, and boom big ouchie for the target. On May 21st of this year as well, an anonymous civilian discovered something quite unsettling. They walked up upon multiple melodic cocktails. They immediately alerted a park ranger as quickly as they could. They ran all the way down to the Santa Monica Mountain Recreation Center. Upon inspecting the designated trail, the park ranger discovered upwards of eight devices and some gasoline containers not too far away. It looked like they were trying to be hidden in a nearby wooded area. The items were quickly recovered by the LAPD, and, of course, assisting agencies also lent a helping hand. Evidence left at the scene somehow led authorities to a particular suspect. This suspect was named Maxim Klemenko, who was then arrested for possession of destructive materials. This charge constitutes a felony offense in California, and carries a maximum prison sentence of four years. Much like the Yellowstone mystery foot, there is very sparse details on this story and researching it was very hard. The most recent article I found was dated March 26th of this year. It relays something along the lines of the LAPD have yet to really release how they knew Clemenko was their man. And, as of right now, we don't have any updates, but if we do get some, potentially we'll cover them in a future video. Talladega Murder Camp Finally, I saved the most brutal and most heavy case for last. I want to tell you about something that happened on August 14th of this year. So, very, very recently. It's as wild as it is tragic, and I'm sure this is going to hit you right in your feelings. So I'm just going to start at the beginning and do my best not to spoil anything at the end. It all begins with a young college couple returning for their next semester of schooling. They were attending the University of Central Florida when they made an impulsive and somewhat random decision to visit the Talladega National Forest in Alabama. 22-year-old Adam Simji and his 20-year-old girlfriend, Michaela Paulus, were driving down a forest road near the Chiaha Mountains when a woman suddenly flagged them down, looking desperate for help. Once at the woman's car, the couple spent well over an hour trying to help. They even went so far as contacting relatives for tips to get this car started and working for this woman. But ultimately, when nothing worked, they offered to get help at the nearest ranger station for the woman. That's when the woman, who would later be identified as Yasmin Hyder, pulled out a gun, told the couple to drop their phones, asked for their banking passwords, and began walking them into the woods. As it would turn out, Adam would actually be armed, and he chose this moment to draw his weapon. He yelled for Yasmin to get on the ground, but the woman simply just did not comply. Instead, she fired a shot from her own gun, and though her gun jammed at first, Adam was struck once while Yasmin was struck a few times. During this exchange, Michaela would realize there was another woman there with them, who would later be identified as Crystal Diane Perkins. They were watching just in the distance nearby. When the gunfight ended, Yasmin called for their accomplice. But apparently, after a brief conversation or some sort of confrontation potentially, apparently, Crystal ran deeper into the forest. Adam was also grievously injured, and at this point, Michaela was finally able to call for some help. It was roughly 11.30 a.m. when Clay County Rescue Squad, Shinbone Valley, Volunteer Fire Department, Linville Police, and Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to the area. Upon arrival, they discovered Michaela trying to perform CPR on Adam, but he never regained consciousness after his wounds. He was unfortunately, uh, pronounced dead at the scene. Yasmin was found nearby with multiple gunshot wounds to her torso. She was flown to Birmingham Hospital where she went under many different surgeries under the watchful eye of the police and investigators. For the next several hours, police searched all over the Talladega National Forest for the other assailant who fled. Investigators soon learned that a group of people may be living off the grid somewhere in the Talladega Forest, and based on some local reports and rumors, they were said to be 
be armed and dangerous. Tracking dogs from the Alabama Department of Corrections and the Alabama Law Enforcement Aviation Unit joined the search. Eventually, the tracking team led them to a cluster of tents deep within the National Forest. Surprisingly though, it was only a half mile away from where this robbery took place. Officers would later go on to describe this as some sort of a base camp. On their approach, they noticed Crystal standing there near the tents. They immediately ordered her to the ground. But before she could even comply, her five-year-old son comes walking out with a shotgun. Luckily, the little boy puts it down and there is no one harmed. Crystal was initially arrested for child endangerment by the Clay County Sheriff's Office. She was initially taken to the Clay County Detention Center. She would be there until the Department of Human Resources could further look into the case. Obviously, they would eventually take custody of her child. Later, authorities would add one count of murder, two kidnappings, and two counts of robbery to her list of charges, which are the same ones Yasmin would receive. Adam's family started a GoFundMe, which was successfully able to cover his funeral funds, as well as assist with Michaela's therapy as she tries to move on from this situation. I can't imagine the trauma she must have endured going through such a situation such as this, but I wish her all the best in her recovery. It will probably be some time before we get any more details about this case since it is so recent. Not even the woman's attorney information is available yet until August 17th due to a gag order issued by Judge David Law. It prevents defense lawyers and law enforcement from making comments on the case. On an interesting side note, while it is legal to camp in the Talladega National Park, you have to move every 21 days or so. So, if you do make a plan on living in Talladega, just make sure you're pretty nomadic. Oh yeah, and uh, don't try to rob or kill anybody. Well guys, that's it for tonight. You know I'll have another video for you guys in a few days. These were some truly disturbing and strange things found by park rangers. And honestly, like I said in the intro, I salute you guys. Your job is absolutely insane. And I couldn't imagine the strange and crazy things that aren't even reported on a daily basis. I'm sure there's tons of them out there. If you guys have any topic ideas that you'd like to see in this type of format, uh, please comment them down below. Definitely let me know how you liked this video. I really, really would appreciate some feedback and knowing how I can improve the channel, how I can make these types of videos better. And don't worry, I will get better with the editing. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that red button. Slap that like button button like it owes you a month's worth of lunch money and don't forget to comment down below let me know what you thought about these things if you have any strange things that have been discovered by park rangers or police officers or anything in between let me know i'd love to make another video on it with that all said and done and out of the way thank you guys as always for supporting the swamp and i'll see you guys soon with another creepy episode